How you feeling? You feeling sharp? Sharp as an elephant's ass. Land of Bad was written and directed by William Eubank, who did Underwater and other projects. Check out his IMDb page for the full listen of his work. I actually rather enjoyed Underwater, even though when you read up on it, it sat on the shelf for a few years. It had Kristen Stewart and a bunch of people that were, wait for it, wait for it, Underwater and bad shit goes on. While by no means a movie that contains a deep narrative, it was fun. It had a few neat little atmospheric shots, and Kristen Stewart at times didn't have pants on, so that was always a good thing. Enough about Kristen Stewart. She is not in this movie. Nowhere near this goddamn movie. Thank fuck. But yes, it was also written by David Virgilio, who did Crypto. Not the actual bullshit NFT stuff, but... He also did The Signal. Not the 2007 Signal, but the 2014 Signal. A lot of movies that seem to have similar titles. So let's get back to Land of Bad. Land of Bad is coming out in a month, but I was able to see it because of a special screening at Regal Cinemas for their Mystery Movie Monday. They do the occasional mystery movie, and I decided after enjoying some of them and also watching Freelance that was absolute goddamn dog shit, I decided I'm going to try to go to as many mystery movies as possible and I knew it was Radar, I knew it was almost two hours, and decided to give it a shot. I think I saw one trailer for this, I saw that Russell Crowe was in it, I saw that Liam Hemsworth was in it, you know, Gale from Hunger Games, you know, the guy that isn't Chris Hemsworth, but actually is a fairly decent actor, I actually think, unfortunately, he's going to end up having almost the Baldwin type stuff, or he's going to end up being like... Almost a Lanny Poffo. It's like, I'm very, very eloquent, but Randy is my brother. And if anybody gets that, I'm going way, way too deep on the whole goddamn wrestling thing. But yes, Liam Hemsworth plays Kenny, a.k.a. Playboy, who's a rookie, you know, military operative who goes along on a mission. He's very good with technology. <coughs> he can have eyes and ears and figure out all this stuff. He's really good with tech. He's decent with a gun, but he's around a whole bunch of seasoned veterans, including a guy named Bishop and a guy named Sugar. Do, 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 do. Jungle jungles of the Philippines, and we've got generic shots. And Russell Crowe plays Reaper. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say right there. Russell Crowe plays Reaper. He is the Reaper man bringing the fire down from his plane that's not on land because that would be pointless. What's the point of having a plane on land if you're not going to use it for drone strikes? Yes, he is Reaper, the seasoned drone strike operative who just sits there and at times literally phones in his role. I love Russell Crowe. Glad he entered one of my favorite movies, A Beautiful Mind. The man is a tremendous actor. He also... Has some issues, but he's a tremendous actor. He's an odd musician. <coughs> he's also in The Pope's Exorcist. He's banned a lot of stuff. Good, bad, and indifferent. I always love watching Russell Crowe in movies. And when I saw that his face was all over this poster, which is easy to do, given that the man doesn't exactly look all that healthy, I was like, all right, you know what? I'll give it a shot. They wait a few minutes before they even get to the goddamn title. I actually had to look up and, oh, Russell Crowe, what's he in? Oh, it's this movie. Because I wanted to just see what the fuck it was. When it's a mystery movie, you have to build the mystery, as our Lord and Savior, uh, Sarah McLaughlin, once said. God, she still looks great for being in her mid-50s. <laughs> Let's get back to the movie. So, yeah. You have a rookie Delta uh, Force, you know, or Air Force guy that goes with a Delta Force mission into the Philippines to get intel on somebody and possibly rescue somebody, but not exactly sure. They throw a whole bunch of characters in. And then they, we don't really know anything about these characters. Not that we care either. I mean, we get the generic stuff. The writing, I guess, could be, you know, classified as crisp, also generic. If you've seen a lot of the 80s and early 90s, like action movies with military and stuff like that, this has a decent budget and is basically that. You don't get a whole lot to go on. You just get action eventually. And then you get the people being picked off. And then you get a couple people fighting for their lives. And considering that I mentioned Liam Hemsworth, obviously he would be one of the people fighting for his life. Considering that he's the rookie, obviously he has to be one of the people that they centrally focus on. So yeah, how is Land of Bad? Well, they got one word right. It is bad. It is really apocalyptically bad. It is totally inconsistent. It is disjointed as fuck. It's an hour and 50 or so minutes and really runs out of steam, I would say, 50 minutes in. <laughs> and it had maybe enough steam to carry for half of that 50 minutes. This movie is bad. It has some entertaining moments for all the wrong goddamn reasons. There is a villain in this movie, and that is played by Robert uh, Rabia. 
who has been good in other stuff, by the way. A lot of these cast members have been good in other things. Um, there's Gunnar Wright. <coughs> there's also Abel, played by Luke Hemsworth, a.k.a., you know, he's almost like, he's almost like the Jerry Lawler's kid that wasn't in wrestling. Deep cuts on the whole uh, goddamn wrestling thing here. The whole point is that Hemsworth, they're like the Baldwins, except with less drug problems and less, and less shooty shooty stuff going on. You have a guy for, that was from American Gods, Ricky Whittle. Um, he whittles while he works, and the bishop is a jerk. But, oh no, maybe they aren't. Maybe they're just really hard on the rookie. <laughs> I'm sorry. And then there, Milo. Uh, the guy that was in Gamer, um, Armored, and also Heroes, Milo V. Because if I try to say his goddamn last name, not only am I going to screw it up, but it's going to sound like some Italian pastry that nobody wants to try. Yeah, they just... Here's why this movie is bad. The action is not... <clears throat> the action is everything that you've seen before. Shootouts, some blood, there's a few decent things, but you don't have any reason to care about any of the heroes. You don't have any reason to care about any of the villains. Nameless people are just bouncing around, getting shot, getting blown up because we have the drones. We have all this stuff. I'm not spoiling anything in this because missing out on this movie will not haunt you at all. The fact that this got released <coughs> in theaters and didn't go directly to streaming is a bit surprising. This felt like it should have come out about 15 to 20 years ago at the most recent. I mean, this was really not very good. <coughs> um... I was convinced that Russell Crowe's character was in a completely different movie because, yes, they had it where they were, it was him, and I wrote her name down, Chika Okogwe, Okogwe, I'm pretty certain I probably totally butchered that. They had halfway decent chemistry, but it also did not fit with what's going on in the goddamn mission in the Philippines after people get picked off. Basically, it is up to Kenny, a.k.a. Playboy, that is what uh, Reaper calls him to figure out all this stuff and get to this landing part, but of course, it's not going to be all that easy. And considering he's able to cover these kilometers pretty goddamn quickly, they have to pad this thing out. Endlessly. They endlessly pad this motherfucking thing out. I I just, I can't fucking take it anymore. I can't fucking take it anymore. This, these kind of movies get released in theaters, and I see all these independent horror movies. <laughs> or these independent projects that don't get nearly like the wide release as something like this will get. Now, yes, you could take this just as it being entertainment. The problem is, is I would take the beekeeper over this because at least the beekeeper understood what the fuck it was. This movie doesn't know what it wants to be. It wants to take a bunch of cliches. It wants to <clears throat> introduce characters, bring characters back out of goddamn nowhere, Cinderella story, and then it wants to just have <coughs> nameless, faceless villains getting blown up. It wants to have the littlest bit of story to any kind of central villain. Nobody has any character. No, You don't care about Liam Hemsworth's character because it feels like it was chopped up. It really feels like despite this hour, 50 minute runtime, they maybe had three hours of material <coughs> and decided to cobble together the worst bits. This is endlessly padded, endlessly overdone. The action is not good. And you, at one point, it just goes totally off the goddamn rails in the last, like, 30 or so minutes. And it... <laughs> the logic leaps as far as time. There's going to be timed interval things I'll talk about here in the spoilers. There's no way this amount of time this amount of action could happen in this short amount of time yes it's an action movie yes you're probably not supposed to necessarily dive too much into it and take it too seriously but when something is <clears throat> trying to treat its material seriously and then you have russell crowe um cracking jokes and everything that's fine i would have rather followed russell crowe's <clears throat> um character here because nothing about liam hemsworth's character was interesting at all and by the time you get to the conclusion, you're just you're just left with like a just a puddle like in your head of just like a just a glob of like everything that this movie has done. It just takes all these ideas and just basically 
ramrods them into your head like just enjoy the stupid the stupidity of these characters and the blandness and the fact that you aren't going to give a shit at all the camera work is halfway decent at times and other times feels very amateurish the action isn't good <clears throat> once again russell crowe's character is enough of a standout doesn't belong in this goddamn movie <clears throat> you got to pick a different tone because you can laugh at what Russell Crowe says. You can even somewhat enjoy what Liam Hemsworth does if you watch The Hunger Games. Because The Hunger Games, even the worst Hunger Games, a.k.a. Um, <coughs> Mockingjay Part 2, I don't understand why in the world this movie felt the need to exist in this universe when it feels like a relic of the past. This feels like something where the studio said, okay, we have this idea, let's just do it in the worst way possible. Hey, wait, this guy did Underwater that some people liked. Let's just have him do it, and maybe we'll give him, you know, maybe this will boost his career. No, this is probably going to end up actually damaging his career. Doing something like this, and I hope it doesn't, because William Eubanks showed potential with Underwater, but this ends up just being a movie that is not good. It's not good at all. I'm going to get into spoilers here in just a bit, but it is going to be out in theaters on February 18th, reportedly. I would not be surprised if this movie gets pulled within a couple weeks and is out on streaming by mid-March. Nevertheless, 3, 2, 1, I'm warning you. I'm warning you. I am warning you one more time. <coughs> spoilers. Okay, so basically, it seems like Kenny, a.k.a. Playboy, is the only person left. This is after this mission goes tits up. <clears throat> People get shot. This guy's, this guy's wife, apparently this bad guy, his wife gets her head cut off by this other bad guy, played by Robert uh, Rabia. <clears throat> and then, and then, they, they uh, break protocol to stop this kid from getting shot. This kid that takes off with this other woman, we don't see them again. S seemingly, maybe they're living up in the trees <clears throat> with Tarzan. I mean, I don't know. Maybe with the, maybe with the monkeys that, um, and not, not, you know... Um, not the ones that are believers, they couldn't leave her if they tried, but the ones that Shia LaBeouf uh, was with in Indiana Jones 4. <laughs> Remember that pointless scene? A lot of pointless scenes in this one. Playboy is spotted by all this, you know, by this drone. These drones are, <clears throat> this drone is launching some missiles, but then the drone needs to reload. This landing zone thing doesn't work out <clears throat> because there's this firefight. And this jet launches missiles after this helicopter has to take off after shooting. People have guns. These people just show up. These insurgents or whatever just show up and start shooting. I'm not saying this doesn't happen in the Philippines. I'm not saying you need a huge explanation. You need something. You need some reason as to why these people are doing this stuff. And I don't care. I, don't, I, I, I didn't care. Even if there was an explanation... I tuned the fuck out because the movie didn't matter. And then Russell Crowe's cracking jokes. <clears throat> this commander won't answer the phone. Nobody will answer the phone. He has a pregnant wife. <clears throat> Nobody will answer the phone. They turn the ring off because they want to watch a goddamn college basketball game between, I think, Tennessee and Duke. Tennessee and somebody. Don't really give a shit. Um, haven't cared about college basketball in a while. But it's a big money promotion. <clears throat> really makes a whole lot of money that the athletes don't see much of. But nevertheless, they totally forget about the thing with his wife. <clears throat> the um, <clears throat> woman, the sergeant played by um, Chica, or Chica, Chica, however you pronounce her name. <clears throat> she keeps wanting to ask him a question. This question and everything, she's going to get married at some point. I'm going to spoil it right now. At the end, she asks him to walk her down the aisle because her father passed away. That's just something that's shoved out at the very end of the movie. Kenny, a.k.a. Playboy, Manages to get rescued by Sugar, do 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 do, and then Sugar gets shot, and <clears throat> in the head, shrieking Chris von Eric noises, and then Bishop apparently is alive. How did Sugar survive this explosion on this cliff? How did Bishop survive? I don't. I don't need deep narrative. I need something. <clears throat> And then they rescued this one guy that apparently was somebody that they were looking for. Because they still found what they were looking for. And Kenny, A.K. Playboy, has to come up with all this creative stuff like how to use a plastic bottle to find a way to contact them when their comms get broken. Because movie. Because he has ingenuity. And that's fine. If you explore enough stuff and don't just throw everything into a blender, span around to a beautiful oblivion rendezvous and I want to throw this into the goddamn wall. 
Yeah, <clears throat> Russell Crowe also ends up getting relieved of his duty because <clears throat> him and the sergeant have been sitting there way too goddamn long while this mission's going on. So there's this other one, but that's not this other guy that comes in, this gunner guy, <clears throat> but not before Playboy says, hey, here's what I want to do. Time these intervals of these strikes. Every 15 minutes, 11, 11, 15, 11, 30, we're going to bomb these caves and we're going to blow all this stuff up and we're going to trap all these people in. But then they get captured. Sugar gets the Chris Von Eric treatment. <clears throat> or the Gino Hurt. No, the Chris Adams treatment. There it is. And then, you know, he... <laughs> Playboy gets beat. This... The rubber Radaya or Babaya guy basically says, "Hey, this is why we're doing this. We're we, just because there's really no actual explanation. Not that you need it, and anything that he shouts, you don't really care. Not only not only because the character is so um, one note, but just you tune out of every goddamn thing at this point. And they're trying to drown him in this water, as opposed to drown him in this flower." I mean, I guess you could. I guess you could drown somebody in flour if you tried. Be more smothering them. The second strike goes, and everybody gets incinerated except this, except Robert Rabia's character. After rescuing this one guy that they were looking for, he beats the shit out of this other, out of Robert's character. Beats the shit out of him. <clears throat> stabs him with a scimitar that he found somehow, and. <coughs> I'm sorry, allergies <clears throat> or a goddamn bitch. I apologize, <laughs> but he fought. This is this is within thirty minutes, fifteen, fifteen, and fifteen. It's within thirty minutes that they're doing this, and it's bullshit. All this stuff would have not been happening within fifteen, to, you know, twenty minutes or whatever. It would have been like over an hour or something. But that being said, he tries to get this calm thing going to tell people to abort, abort. It's like they're pulling the whole thing from the rock. <clears throat> Anybody remembers that movie? Vastly superior to this, even at its worst moments. And he manages to just get aboard because Russell Crowe got sent, so he's he got sent away from his post. So he's at this grocery store at night that has nobody in the parking lot, in the parking garage, but somehow there's a bunch of people in there. His wife is vegan. He's getting all this stuff. We're watching Russell Crowe do all this shopping while this guy's getting beaten. And, <clears throat> and these missiles are going to get launched. And he's not aware. Russell Crowe doesn't answer the phone and as sees the voice or hears the voicemail and is rushing out. <clears throat> and apparently this military base is right over by <clears throat> the grocery store within a couple miles. He manages to get through, <clears throat> gets on the goddamn deal. Is try had tried to call the phone before and gets on and just manages to get aboard aboard just before the missiles are launched and everybody's fine. Bishop, the guy they were rescuing, whose name escapes me, I don't give a shit, and Playboy. Everybody's fine, they get rescued. <clears throat> and then Russell Crowe decides to take a that basically yells at the colonel and you know says, Oh, congratulations to the great state of Tennessee, and he took out the goddamn TV. Russell Crowe destroying property that belongs to somebody else. I never would have expected that. Again, love Russell Crowe, <clears throat> and yeah, then the woman asks him to walk her down the aisle, and there you go, and then they do a dance thing and everything, and what was this movie? It was bad. It was Land of Bad. It gets an F. It's terrible. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rithlin. I'll see you soon.